What were those first kind of things that were going on? Tell us, you know, tell us what your friends and family here. Um, one year ago, I was I was having some stomach problems, so I they wanted me to go in for a, like a minor surgery to see what was wrong. And I told all of my friends and people I was hanging out with the day before, oh yeah, I'm going into a surgery for something, but it's minor. And ended up I never came back to school. Pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty heavy. So what were the kind of things, and what did your family do, and what did your church families do, and what did people, you know, what, what were the first things that people did? Did they, they, they stick their head in the sand? Did they, uh, what did we do? What did people do? Well, when we first found out that they thought it might be cancer, there's just like, for me, there's just a weird peace over everything. Really? Yeah. Tell us about it, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily mad, because I knew that it was for a reason. What do you think some of those reasons now that this year has gone by and you've been found to be cancer free from bone to body to every part of you, what kind of things, you know, have, have transpired? What kind of great things for God have transpired? There has been people all around the world that have heard this story and even they've accepted Christ. And I've had so many people message me or text me saying, I went back to church because of you, or you led me back on the right path when I heard your story. So many people, when they go through a crisis, the first reaction is bitterness. The first reaction is, God, you really did the number on me. How could you do this, you know, kind of thing? And yet, Katie Wagner and her entire family have never seen any of that, neither of you. There's been this sense of, of uh, like you said, peace. How do you account for that? How do you account for the fact that you've been at peace? Tell me, tell me about your relationship with God. Uh, well, for our personal sake, my relationship with God has gotten even stronger than it was before. And I was from the beginning, everyone just sent me verses and all this stuff, and I just started understanding more. Yeah. She's been going through chemo, as you know. She's been going through all sorts of treatments and, and, and so on. And uh, let me ask you, you know, for this whole year, what kind of things do you feel like you missed out on? Um, well, believe it or not, I actually missed going to school. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be something profound. <laughs> okay. Um, and well, my friends got to go on like, a bunch of vacations during the summer and just hang out with each other. A lot of times I wasn't even allowed to go outside or be around anybody. My numbers are so low, so I could get sick very easily. Now, your treatment is going to continue until when? December. I have 10 or 11 weeks left. Wow, that is awesome. What do you plan to do when uh, December comes and January starts? Um, well, I plan to have a baby celebration party. Okay. Can all these people come? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I actually have a make-a-wish and my wish is to go on a cruise for the and I'm going to the bank. That's awesome. <laughs> I volunteer to go as a great. Tell us about some uh, students, your interaction with students and, and ministry because what you may not know is student ministry, you know, really student ministry led by John and Christine Lunsford completely changed last year. In fact, really what you were going through really defined a lot of what students were going through. Were there many students that were fearful? Were there many students that, uh, you know, wondering themselves, how does this touch me? How does it affect me? Well, I know that when everyone first found out, it was just everybody posted on Facebook, everybody was messaging me, and it's, I don't even know. Yeah, it really is. You know, sometimes, we're going to talk about this here just a little bit, sometimes we don't see the whole picture, just kind of like, you know, I was sharing at the very beginning. I believe that one day God is going to give us all the DVD. We're going to see the ins and outs. And you, dear Katie, 
or problem you see, over a million people that somehow were holding the ropes in your life. People from Rwanda, and people from Sweden, and people from Phoenix, and people from all over the place and said, I don't know her, but I know her. Isn't that a picture of what the body of Christ is supposed to be, that kind of thing? How does it really make you feel when you know so many people are doing that? For me, it's just, it's not me. Because I am such a shy person. I don't like to talk a lot to people. And it was just weird how everybody, people that didn't even know me, ever supported me since then. That's a piece, and that's a financial piece. All this is this kind of a difficult financial burden for family as well, and yet the community, really globally, but really here at Anthem, really, really, you know, uh, hold together to really be part of that whole thing. In fact, we've got a table, a gaming table out there that I want you to visit afterward as well. But, but, you know, everybody coming together has done something amazing. So we've seen God answer prayer in Katie's life, but Katie, because of you, Something remarkable happened out there. Something tied people together as has never happened in our community before. And I hate to say it, but you who went through your difficulty in crisis has brought blessing to every person. Now, I was on the phone, you know, Katie's going to be there? Great. I don't care too much about you, Bob, but Katie's going to be there? Great. Because we want to hear. Uh, and there's one more thing. You know, the week before October 17th last year, you don't may not remember this, but uh, Katie happened to be up in the community center pushing weights. I don't do you remember that. Okay, yeah. pushing weights, and I I'm up there wearing my rags, and you know, she's looking just you know amazing and all these kind of things and pushing. And uh, it took her a while to say, "Oh, that's you, Pastor Bob." <laughs> you know, and, you know we, we talk and all those kind of things, and it's interesting the small talk that we had that even one week later would completely change. And it's a reminder for all of us here, every moment, every relationship, every conversation may be different next week. So enjoy, enjoy those times of conversation because I'll tell you what, it will make a difference. I want you to give Katie a hand here and I want her whole family to stand up.